Hi, everyone. Welcome to Soul Talk. I'm Patty Malik, and today Jaylene Tracy is with us. Jaylene's new to Soul Talk, and we're going to be talking about healing with the joy codes. Uh, Jaylene is going to talk about how the simple act of resonating with the vibration of joy leads to healing in our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Uh, and if you're um, new to Jaylene's work, uh, and like I said, she hasn't been with us before, but some of her her uh, people that follow her are here today as well, um, and you're familiar with her work, but I'll just read a little bit about what her work is all about. She is a vibrational geneticist who channels light-coded sound vibrations to create shifts in the energetic, emotional, and physical elements of the body. And working with multidimensional light beings, she identifies areas of imbalance, disease, and disharmony in the body and channels specific tones to address each one of those. The vibrational genetics modality was developed by Jaylene during her work with clients as a body talk practitioner when she began to connect with several multidimensional beings who offered their help and guidance during healing sessions. One such group is a council of compassionate guides known as the Mantis. And through Jaylene's work with the Mantis and other extra-dimensional beings, she has reawakened her deep connection to the earth and its healing power. As we are an integral part of the whole Gaian system, uh, the humans function best when in an active relationship with Earth and the web of life. Earth represents a key component to our healing, longevity, and well-being knowledge uh, that indigenous and ancient people all across the globe have understood for thousands of years. And through the Mantis's teachings, Jaylene has learned how to channel uh, the song of the Earth logos to bring healing, guidance, and DNA realignment to a higher resonance. And with that, I want to welcome Jaylene to the show. Welcome to Soul Talk, Jaylene. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Patty, for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I love this. And we were just talking bef- behind the scenes there that about your work and how I was saying I don't think, you know, in all the time that I've been doing the show that anyone has addressed this um, work uh, the joy codes. So I'm excited mm. that you're here. And I also uh, wanted to mention to the audience that you would be taking their questions if they want to uh, hit star two on the phone, um, or they can type them into the web form on the webcast page and we'll get to those. Um, but I want to, let's just start with the obvious. Um, what are the joy codes for those that are new <laughs> to your work? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, because you know, if anyone has heard me talking before, they know I talk a lot about the microbiome and about DNA, and I love all of that. And um, the guides that you mentioned that I work with, the Mantis, are amazing genetic healers. And so when I talk about joy codes, I actually am talking about codes of DNA. And these codes of DNA were revealed to me when I was on uh, a hike in Sedona, I was in this beautiful sacred place and I was doing a hike and sat to do a meditation. And um, while I was in that meditation, I was connecting with different guides. I was connecting with some Native American energy and with the man guides who I always feel so strongly there. It's it's just amazing. One of the reasons I'm I'm drawn there um, to constantly go back. Um, And in that, Uh, meditation they showed me that deep within the heart within the still point of the heart basically the place where if you imagine you have an umbilical cord that travels from your oversoul through your higher self and via into you in physical form and that place where that umbilical cord meets your physicality it's what they, my guides have called the still point of your heart. It comes in through the heart, and it is there that these master codes of DNA reside. And in this meditation, they showed me all of these different codes lighting up in the DNA that are specific for the resonance and the vibration of joy. And that what they showed me is the vibration of this joy, this vibration, 
I keep saying it because it's super important that everything vibrates in the universe. All was light and light coalesced into vibration of sound and then sound coalesced into matter. And so everything's vibrating constantly. And so is the DNA. And the DNA, when it vibrates in resonance with these codes, when they're expressed, and when the genes are, the gene products are made, um, they uh, amplify and make it much easier for us to remain in a state of joy, to remember that. Because everything that has an energetic component also has a genetic component, meaning it starts as energy, but then it gets transferred into a gene product in the body. When we carry a strong emotion of fear, what do we get? We get the stress response, and we get all the biochemistry of stress in our body, the cortisol, the epinephrine, the norepinephrine. When we're in feelings of love and connection, what do we get? We get the hormones and neurotransmitters of love and connection and joy, and that's like oxytocin, anandamide. So, and those are made in the heart, and they're made in the breast, and they're made in the brain. And so it's not surprising um, that these codes of joy create products, actual physical products in the body that help us to feel better, help us to feel the urge, the inclination to reach out and to connect with one another, to be compassionate, to be helpful, not in servitude, but out of joy, in service, out of joy, and not in service, in sacrifice. So that's what they showed me, and and I knew that that was some, an amazing thing that I had to create more information around and share it with people because it just really blew me away. And I could feel it inside my body expanding as they were showing it to me. So that's wow. where they came from. So joy is uh, in the heart. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, well, these codes are in the heart, and, and we travel it all over the body, yes. It's interesting because so then uh, joy is really, um, is it the same vibration as love, which is? It is. It's the same vibration and yet slightly different. They're telling me right now it's slightly different. It is the same, but sometimes love, the way we think of love and the way many people think of love, has strings attached. And joy has no strings attached. Joy is bliss. Mm. Joy is pure expression. Joy is the pure creative force of the universe. It is the creator personified, which really is what we all are. We are all sparks and emanations of that creative spark of the universe. And that's what joy is. Love Mm. is a facet of joy, but love also for the human has many strings attached and many emotional cords. Joy is tends not to. Joy tends to be more pure, easier to express. It's a state of being. Um, And Mm -hmm. love is also a state of being and something that flows forth from this vibration of joy, as does compassion, as does connection. Interesting. So are there uh, specific genes for joy? And why would they be turned off or muted? Exactly. That's because of the world we live in and our perceptions and our forgetting of who and what we are. So we live in a world that tells us from the time that we are tiny children that we're not good enough, that we better measure up, that unless we do X, Y, and Z, that we're not going to be successful. Every commercial is, you know, you're not pretty enough, you're not this, you're not that, you better be like this. And so we're constantly fighting back to try and win our place here. We're trying to, and sometimes it comes from the parents, right? If we're in an abusive or we're in a neglectful situation, or even if we're in a semi-neglectful situation, like the parents just aren't really energetically present or engaged, there's all kinds of variations of that theme. Then there's all kinds of variations of that theme that play out in peer groups and with relationships that we get into um, with loved ones. And so humans, because we have forgotten who and what we are, very easily fall into these cycles of remembering through our own experience 
that forgetting that we are source personified, that we are one with all that is, then plays out in these scenarios where we're trying to even just earn a place to be here, which is trying to earn a little plat- patch of ground. Do I deserve to be here? Do I even think that I deserve to be here? I don't recognize that anyone here recognizes that I deserve to be here, so maybe I don't deserve to be here. And it's this process that human beings go in, go through over and over and over again. And it's those kinds of processes that we experience that really mute the expression of, because genetics are genetics. You have your DNA. It's like a book. How that book is read, which chapters are read, which sentences are read, has everything to do with the function and the health of your body, right? You could have all the codes for perfect health, and you do, but not necessarily all of them are being expressed because we also have all the codes for different viruses because viruses have been interpolating into our DNA always as since time immemorial. They've been around longer than we have. They're completely part of our DNA. And so the expression of different microbes, the expression of different diseases, the, the, the potentials are there, but so are the potentials for perfect health. And I think a lot of times we focus on the potentials for the negative. Genetic testing is all about finding the potentials of the negative versus finding the potentials of the positive. Wouldn't it be exciting if someone did a whole genetic study on finding codes for things that, codes for joy, codes for connection, codes for peace and harmony and well within. And they taught us how to amplify those because it's all about how the DNA is expressed, how that book is read, which is epigenetics. And your epigenetics Mm -hmm. can get shifted really easily through your diet, through your emotional experiences, through exposure to toxins, through um, a a bad night's sleep. So many different things can change the way your genes are expressed. And so that's why I know that the potential is there for everyone to express these, but that they're not being expressed. They are in some people, people who are doing lots of meditation and lots of integration of their whole self, but so many are struggling to stay in that feeling of joy and connection. It feels like an intangible or it feels like something they might sit in for five minutes or ten minutes, but then they lose it because their day is stressful or something happens. So I'm talking about finding that place and staying in it far more often and resonating with it as having it become more about the way you live and more about the way you feel on a more constant basis than just this place that we visit when we're, you know, laughing and having a joyful moment. More like joy as a way of being as opposed to joy as a pit stop. You know, and I would think that it's getting easier to access that place, you know, of joy with the higher frequencies on the planet. But how can we access more of it, um, you know, to boost our resilience and and thrive in health and our well-being? Yeah. So the way that the guys have shown me, and and this actually um, harkens back to a lot of the work that I've been doing this year um, with my guides and a variety of them, They've brought in a lot of information about becoming neutral in your environment. And this is something I talk a lot about because it's so important. In order to get to the step where you're in a good place to move into, to traverse into something like joy, it's really good to first learn how to work with your environment so that your environment's not working you. Because so often as empaths and so many of us drawn to this work and probably listening are very sensitive and empathic and oftentimes overwhelmed with the energy around them and what's going on on the planet, feeling the pain of the collective because the collective is shifting and moving and yes, has all this potential, but is also in this state of upheaval. There's a lot of blender action <laughs> happening right now, right? So those right. energies can feel quite chaotic and overwhelming and stressful. So I find that really the the best way for people to move into the state where they're able to start opening up the expression of these joy codes is to first learn how to be a really good conscious observer of their environment, 
and start to understand what in their environment triggers them, what they're taking, taking personally, what moves them out of a state of neutrality and present moment focus and pulls them into a story, and to understand what those stories are about and where they originated, go to the roots of them and pull up those roots, let them be felt, let them be experienced, let them be released, because so many times those roots are connected to a different lifetime or a theme that your soul's been working on for multiple lifetimes. So there's, there, yes, there's work to be done, but at the same time, that journey is a journey that many of us have been on for many years trying to understand ourselves and try to see where we fit into this whole big picture of evolution of the collective and evolution of our own soul. And mm. that process, that curiosity, takes one into that place where they are ready to start allowing energy to be felt, to be experienced, but not absorbed, to pass through them like an open window and not to be absorbed like a sponge and held on to where it conflicts and interacts with the organs, but just to be experienced in a state of neutrality. So I, I think that's the take-home message is, is to find your way to a state of neutrality and this doesn't mean that you are absent or not caring or um, you know, get your head in the sand, you're not paying attention. It really means that you are fine-tuning the way that you are interacting with your environment. That you're allowing your environment to be, that you don't judge it, that you don't try and change it, that you just accept. You're neutral. You experience, mm. you accept. And that puts you into right there puts you into a higher state of joy because you no longer feel like the things around you are harming you energetically. Instead, you just observe them. And I'm talking about the whole energetic spectrum, things that might have even seen you before. You realize everything is just energy. And the mantis have taught me a lot about this. Everything's just energy. Whether it's a low vibration, high vibration, everything is just somewhere on that scale. And the way you participate with that energy has everything to do with how long it hangs around you, whether or not it gets stuck to you, whether or not you resonate with it. So they taught me to be very observant about what's around me, to observe, but to not judge, not engage, but watch, allow. Don't try and push away because that takes too much effort. And this is really important for empaths. So they're trying to push everything away. It, it's exhausting. And that mm. also would keep you out of joy, right? So right. Um, so that's really the first step is that neutrality. Interesting. Because, you know, I'm always trying to stay in a practice of keeping my vibration high. And you're saying to just stay very neutral and observe so you don't have to I think that when engage. you are neutral... Yeah, but I think when you are neutral that your vibration naturally rises. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Very interesting because, you know, the other thing that came up for me um, as you were talking before is that um, before the call for like maybe like a half an hour before, the, I just kept getting this message of uh, remembering who we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what you were yep. bringing up, so it was like very powerful. Yeah, but that's what really this work is about, you know, in accessing mm -hmm. the joy codes. Interesting. Um, so that's how can so we? True. How can we um, cultivate, uh, or how can cultivating uh, compassion for others and ourselves lead to healing? I know that was a big thing for me, um, and it still is that yeah. we talk about. So I talk about a little bit in the beginning about how there are different biochemical responses to being in different emotional states. And one of the most uh, potent healers in the body that the guides often bring in to one-on-one -on -one sessions when I'm working with somebody and they're having a lot of nervous system, adrenal fatigue, or just, you know, chronic fatigue, or they're having... Um, digestive issues or um, a lot of pain in their body, a lot of that stems from um, emotional trauma and from um, this over 
amplification over taxing on the nervous system. And um, biochemical changes start happening in the body very rapidly under those conditions. Your microbiome, your microbiota, uh, makes up about 60% of your body. And when you are in a state of high stress or fear or uh, even intense grief or depression for a long time, you literally change the landscape and the diversity of your microbiome. And your microbiome is so important because it is um, managing and training your immune system and helping you to have um, a perfect response to pathobionts that come to your body. Um, it is helping you to sequester nutrients from the food that you eat. It is helping to maintain those um, tight junctions in your um, intestines so that you don't get a lot of toxins in the bloodstream that the liver then has to deal with. So I see people in all different states, um, but with lots and lots of stress, it changes that. It actually leads, high stress leads to gut permeability. Um, and it puts us into a state of disharmony, as does um, prolonged stress, even when it's low level. It starts to change things around the body, and it all harkens <laughs> back to the microbiome. So by putting yourself into this state of joy and resonating with that, you literally start to shift the biochemistry of the body, and you support the microbiome. The microbiome has a consciousness. They have done multiple meditations with the microbiome. They're incredible creatures. They've been on the planet far longer than we have, billions of years. They started this planet with Mother Earth. They are the caretakers of all life here. They are intricately tied, and they have a consciousness, and they are very energetically sensitive. So when you're in that state of joy, you are feeding them the kind of food that helps to upregulate the diversity that is helpful for training your immune system, for putting in things like GABA into your body, gamma aminobutyric acid, that is the peace and well-being hormone, and serotonin, and dopamine, endorphins, uh, all the good stuff, oxytocin, anandamide, which is the bliss hormone, and helps to reduce pain and muscle aches, as well as GABA. So it, there's just so many benefits to that elixir of joy, and it starts with microbiome. You see, because your gut and your heart and your brain are all connected. They're really all one organism, and they're communicating constantly via the vagus nerve um, and other communication factors in the bloodstream. But it's constant communication, and it's instantaneous. And so you're having an emotion, so are your microbes. And what's happening in your heart is telling your brain how to behave, and it's also telling your gut what's going on. And so everything's so tied together that when you start getting into these states of joy, you really start shifting the whole landscape of your body. And this is where the healing very quickly enters. Your whole body says, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so much easier to take care of you now that you are resonating with the part of you that is full of potential for health as opposed to all of the potentials for disease and disharmony. Mm. You know, I heard someone uh, say that people that are uh, that are happy or in a state of happiness um, never struggle with gaining weight. Is that like what you're talking about? Um, you know, I so weight uh, weight is a loaded thing because um, empaths often hold weight because they hold the way they hold energy for people, um, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean though that they're not joyful people. I think the two are not um, connected entirely. There is something to say because there are literally microbes that have um, will predispose you to uh, gaining weight versus microbes that predispose you to being thinner. And when they put mice in the cages with either or, they shift from being obese to thin and vice versa. So true that there's actual data showing that that's a possibility but i don't think mm. it's the, the same for everybody okay. because of that connection into the way empaths way i've seen empaths hold energy and i actually have some friends that are quite joyful but not you know thin as rails and so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I i don't know about that yeah 
Um, Interesting. Let me, let Interesting. me ask really quickly. It's a, it's a really good question. Let me just dive into that for one second. I'll just take a pause here and ask, ask my guides about that. They are saying, actually, that happiness, um, just revise that a little bit, that happiness does create a leaner body because when you're in um, happiness, you do raise the energy and the vibration and the movement in your body, and so you tend to uh, process and um, metabolize everything in your body more quickly. Um, so, yes, it's almost like uh, like the joy pill. is like a diet pill in a way. Yes, but it is um, uh, that is the person who is also in that resonance of joy uh, on a very regular basis. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, Thanks for asking that. That's a really interesting yeah. question. I hadn't even thought about that before. Uh, you know, it just it kind of came up as as you were talking, and I thought, you know, I just thought, is that the same as what we're talking about with the joy codes. Um, before we dive into our audience, we have lots of questions here, so I want to get to them. Um, tell us who the who the mantis are that you encountered. Yeah, in your work. I'd love to. I love these beings. They're like my family. Um, <laughs> so I said that I started, which sounds funny because they're like nine foot tall insectoid beings, but. Um, I started connecting to them, like like you said in the bio, when I was learning body talk, and and this very large figure, motherly, <laughs> motherly triangular shaped head with this large robe on, would come into my sessions and start telling me what was going on, and and um, at first because I didn't realize she was mantis, um, I you know I thought I, I was not really quite sure what was going on, but her information was really good and it was really spot on and accurate, and I did a lot of validation. So I thought, oh, well, okay, good, that's great. And I just kept doing meditations, and it was always because I was in the earth, and that's where I would see them. And then I started, you know, I'd see a room, and I'd see them in a room around a table, some um, equipment on the back wall. It's, it's always the same room that I go in to connect with them. And then they started showing me that there's thousands of them, and, and it's not so much that they're literally in the earth or in earth dimensional fields. Um, and they're caretakers of the earth and her energy. And they've been here for um, many, many um, thousands of years in residence. And, and there are different mantis. You know, there's the mantis that um, are uh, not on the earth that are in, on the ships and that are doing other things. But this particular part of their society that lives here within Earth's dimensional field um, is here in support of Earth and all of humanity and the microbes and really all of life on the planet. They are master geneticists, and I realize that these beings, after I start connecting with them, I realize that they've actually been around me my whole life. And mm. it's not a surprise that I was when I went to college, it was like I had to be in the lab that was studying DNA. I had to work on the genome project. I, it was only one. I was like totally um, like laser focused on that's what I wanted to study. I knew from the time that I was a little kid that I was going to study biology. I spent an enormous amount of time outside in nature alone. I'd be outside at night alone. I was never scared. I always felt like I had some protection. I always knew I was going to be okay. And, and and I would say throughout my life that when things did happen to me, I kind of was like, it was very cavalier about it. I thought, oh, I know I'm going to be okay because I just, I just could feel them, I think, even though I wasn't totally connected to all of my um, intuitive abilities at that point. Um, so mm. anyway, they've been around me for a long time, and I've gotten very close to them because they do feel like family. I do feel that I've had many, several lifetimes as Mattis and that I've worked with them extensively and um, in different lifetime experiences of my own where I've been a healer or a doctor, um, that I've worked with their energy and worked with their information. And so they really helped me just to take the information that I have that I've learned either in college or in different courses I've taken um, and just amplified it and shown me the energetic side of everything, shown me how DNA vibrates, how that vibration is uh, a match to source, how we come and vibrate into form and how that is the way 
source manifests itself into physical form here on the planet, which is through our soul. So it's been a fascinating journey with them, um, and they're just the most loving, caring, uh, compassionate beings. But um, I'm just so honored to work with them. Interesting. This is the first time I've heard of um, the term the mantis being so very interesting. Ah. Um, someone is asking on the webcast if there's a specific color that's associated with the mantis beings. Um, she says, I've been experiencing, I've had experiences Green. and wanted to know if these are who I'm in contact with. Okay. Well, when I first started working with them, especially uh, they would always bring green light in to um, my body and into uh, a lot of times with clients. They would bring the green light in as the healing light that they would work with. Um, and so that's the color I associate with them. And I've always hmm. been like green, 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 green. And now I know also why, you know, it's like all these, I had all these aha moments when I started to realize um where that uh, where that connection came from. Interesting, because someone just uh, typed in, I don't know if it's the same person, uh, but they said, I saw a vibrant green grasshopper outside my window in a place where most of them are brown due to environmental conditions. Would you say this was perhaps an interdimensional representation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happens all the time for people after I work on them. They'll be driving home from the session or something. They'll say, oh, my God, there's a mantis on my windshield. <laughs> Is that because of you? And, and I, I think it's their way. It's sort of like their calling card, the insects that we have here on the planet. Um, it's their way of saying, hey, we got your back. We're here with you. And, yeah, thanks for paying attention because they would love nothing more than to help everyone. They've told me, you know, many times that, look, this isn't just – we're not just sharing this with you. You're supposed to teach people how to connect with us. So that everybody can heal with us, that our energy is coming, moving through the earth, and it's to be shared. It's to be um, experienced by everyone. Um, and the toning that I do came from them. They taught me the toning. I heard it in my ears for a while before I started to do it. And yeah. um, they taught me about the vibration of sound and how it shifts DNA really easily and how it's very gentle yet effective and efficient. And they're very efficient and effective beings. Um, they mean business. They're definitely like, like, uh, you know, very compassionate, but at the same time also very, they're kind of like motherly to me. That's how they feel. Stern compassion. <laughs> um, Interesting. but, uh, yeah, very, very amazingly intelligent, you know, just, um, so that, um, light that they bring and the sound that they bring, the way they taught me to work with sound. Um, I mean, they've completely changed my trajectory in my life, I would say, just um, in getting to know them and spending a lot of time with them. Well, and I, obviously guiding you into your work. Yeah, very cool. Yes. Yeah, always. Um, okay, so are we ready to take some callers? Yeah, let's do it. I love talking okay. with people. A lot. It's fun. Okay, so if you want to talk to uh, Jaylene, you can hit star two on the phone, um, and you can also type questions into the webcast, which there's lots there, but we're going to jump to the phones for a bit here. Um, I think it's Heidi in Texas, and the last four digits are 1126. Oh, hi. hi. How are y'all? Hi. Hi. Is hi, it Heidi? Heidi? Yes, it's Heidi. Hi. hi. What's your question for Jaylene? Uh well, uh, I don't know um, what to ask, really, but I'd like for her to bring a little more joy into my life, activate my joy code. <laughs> yeah, you know what? If there's time, um, Patty, we can even do uh, we can do a little tone live transmission towards the end of the call if we have time for that. Um, oh, I'd love that. That, yeah, that's always fun. It's always a nice way to wrap things up, and it um, that will sort of start you off, Heidi. And um, also what I said, Heidi, about um, bringing yourself into your environment, into a state of neutrality would be really helpful for you because um, I know life stresses can get uh, really intense. And especially when are you taking care of kids or 
other people in your life that um, it, it can it can definitely add up and bring us pull us out of the present moment. And so any time that we can get ourselves back into that present moment and um, we're the course that I'm um, offering also um, has activations by Kuan Yin and Angel Collective and the mantis to help give you tools and also to help give activations to bring you back into that state of joy and keep you there um, on a more permanent basis. So um, okay. is there something specific that is pulling you out of the present moment or stressing you that you want to get some guidance on? Uh, yeah, just kind of some health issues. Uh, the, the inner ear is causing me to not be able to drive, so I'm, you know, I just I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere. I have to sit around the house or either hire somebody to drive. And that that takes <laughs> that takes a lot of joy out of my life. Mm-hmm. Because you're feeling trapped and stuck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see. Let me see what they have to say about that. Feels like you have fluid in your ear. Have have what? Fluid. Feels like you actually have fluid in your um, middle ear. This co- are you getting? Yeah, it feels like it to me too. And, and mm-hmm. I don't know how to get like, it out. Mhm. You've got to dry it up, right? It's. Um, it feels yeah. like it might be even fungal biofilm that's been created in your inner ear, and um, our ways of pulling down different fungal. Um, presence in the body. I wouldn't call it an infection. It was like a fungal presence that set up shop there um, that's pulling in the liquid into that space. It's like created a nice cozy biofilm for itself uh, to subsist and survive in. And so there's lots of things you can do. Um, There's some herbal remedies also that I found that are really good um, that you can find that I reference on my website. I would suggest you look at those. One in particular called Aquata um, would be very beneficial for you. Aquata. How do you spell that? It's A Q U A D A, and you. It's oh, well, from this company called Botanical Biohacking, and um, you can find it in. You can find it in six quantities on my website, or you can buy a giant pack of it from them, which is pretty expensive. So, um, oh, okay. Do you put it in the ear, or you mix it on? Like no, no, ear? no, no. You would you take it? It's herbs. Yeah, it's, you take it. Um, they're they're small little pellets. So I would recommend mm-hmm. something like that. I think what you need to do is you need to also. Are you having trouble walking and whatnot because of um, the dizziness? Balance, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you need to take care of that problem first, and then you'll have a lot more freedom. Okay, great. Okay, all right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You are so welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Heidi. Okay, and now we're going to go to Montana. And the last four digits are, oh, my gosh, so many sixes and nines. I can't can't get them straight. (laughs) Nine, six, six, nine. (laughs) I need stronger glasses. Well Hello. done. Yes, yes. Hi. Thank you so much. It's all nines uh, and sixes. <laughs> yes, it is. Aren't I lucky? Who um, are we talking Jaylene, to? Jaylene. Jaylene, this is Sahara. Do you remember Sahara. working with oh, me? Oh, Sahara. Of course I do. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Nice to hear well, from you. Um, I'm fabulous, and I would like your take on something really extraordinary that happened to me. I uh, felt that the Lion's Gate energies were something spectacular that I needed to prepare in a specific way for, and so I fasted for that first week of August, and I got so blasted that After that week, I just felt like I don't need to eat anymore. And Mm -hmm. for the next four or almost five weeks, 
um, I stopped eating. I felt that I was being nourished by light. I was drinking lemon honey water and this green water drink. And um, and now I've just start my whole everything got shifted. My whole uh, uh, relationship with food. I'm just taking little bits of this and that, and I feel like I'm uh, in a, another realm. Can you pick up on that and tell me? what happened and what's going on. <laughs> mm, that's fantastic. So uh, first of all, it's really interesting you bring this up because I've been doing a, a tremendous amount of reading and thinking about fasting. Uh, and I've always practiced intermittent fasting naturally. It's just how I eat, which means, right, that you, sh- you shorten your eating window each day. Um, but uh, the type of fasting that you did uh, really brought in, uh, it, it allowed more energy to come into your field. I would also say, though, Sahara, because of the work you had done prior to that Lionsgate transmission, readied you, prepared you to receive that, and that it wasn't as though you had been polluting your body for years and years and years, and then you suddenly stepped into that place and said, okay, I'm I'm over vulnerable because I have not done any preparation or work, and I'm just going to fast suddenly, right? No, you had been on this path for a while, um, which is really important and really key, and I just want to point that out to people that um, be, if you hear about this, you're like, oh, great, I'm going to try that too. The fasting is something that you do and, and prepare for because it does open you up in so many different ways and it does release emotions and allow things that have been stuck in your energy field to finally release and to um, to leave the body, to go into a state of neutrality It basically, uh, food is a form of energy, right? Everything is a form of energy, and and food is one form of that. Um, And it's a denser form, and and the full spectrum of food, everything from water to uh, meat, red meat, let's say, Um, with red meat being the densest, of course, and crystal spring water being the lightest, So, um, or some version of water. So we have that whole spectrum in between, and when we uh, step out of that uh, perpetual putting in dense energy into our body, you open yourself up to the potential that all of the work you had done prior to that time energetically could finally present itself to you. It's as if you allowed yourself to become very, very present in the moment to actually viscerally feel yourself in the present moment, which puts you in that very rarefied quantum realm where you literally were interacting at that quantum level. And so what you did is you brought yourself, you quantum-sized yourself, uh, you brought yourself into the quantum, and then you have been able to maintain and, and stay there because then you didn't pull yourself out of the quantum with the heaviness of all of the caloric intake in the food. You just felt like you could stay there. You raised your vibration up and then felt like that was a good place for you to be because you had done the work prior. Again, I keep saying that because there's a lot of emotional release that happens during a fast of just water, of no food at all. Um, and they're, they are for certainly possible. They are wonderful. They are cleansing. They are necessary uh, for the human, I believe, and they do tremendous things, like I'm always talking about this, but they do tremendous things for your microbiome. So I I really appreciate you bringing that up because uh, fasting is also a way to the center of your heart. It helps us to release and relieve and release emotions, and it helps us to connect to joy more easily because we're lighter, because we're letting go, because we're not weighing ourselves down. And so that is. But wait, 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 just a second. Place. Hang on, hang on just a second. I want to make something clear here because the actual fast was only a week. I've uh-huh. done, ex- I've done, you know, uh, fasted for weeks at a time previously, but this fast was one week long. And then what happened was that something shifted in my body 
and and the next four or five weeks, it wasn't fasting. It was just that I didn't need food to nourish myself. I did. Did need you food. have my energy? Food or did you just have green juices. What's that? Oh, I, sorry. I said, did you actually have any food during that time? Or did you just have green juices? I had this green powder I added to water, and I was doing uh, lemon and honey and, um, yeah, a little of this gut shot stuff that's like sauerkraut juice. So uh, I, I, Well, that's I still was... considered fasting for many. That's still fasting for sure. That is still just, it's a juice fast, right? It's a, you're getting some phytonutrients, but you're not having the dense material. But so you're not distracting your body to... is what I'm trying to say. What? You're not distracting your body is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but what I'm telling you is that it was a different experience from the fasting experience because I didn't need as much sleep. I was completely energized. I wasn't doing my afternoon naps anymore. I felt that I was being nourished by light. Mm-hmm. Well, fantastic. It, but I, I do think that the fast that you did really opened the door for the whole Lionsgate activation that happened to you to really yes. take root and to stay. And then you didn't mute it right afterwards with a lot of food. You, for all intents and purposes, were still fasting afterwards. That's fasting. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, can, can you, but can you tell what has happened to my body, this shift that has happened in my physical body? Because it's a whole, it's a, I'm having a whole new experience of my body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it feels incredibly. Um, it feels incredibly light. I can tell you, it feels like you're vibrating at a very high level. It feels like you are. Um, it feels. It does feel very joyful. It feels very giddy. It feels very joyful. It feels like I see you laughing. I see you like, kind of like yippee, you know, doing this, like doing cartwheels. You. It looks great. You look fantastic. It looks like there's no reason for it to change. For example, but know that when energy does move through you, that doesn't feel this high vibrational. That that is that is also find that that is also another form of energy to feel and that you'll you're on this crescendo riding this wave and that you might at some point say oh i'm going to get off this wave and i'm going to go surf another wave but that that's perfectly fine too so don't disappointment creep in if you get off the wave okay all right thanks a million thanks so much (laughs) you're welcome Uh, thank you sahara That was interesting. Um, I had uh, one of my guests tell me that um, she had fasted uh, on Good Friday. And she said the next day I woke up and I was able to channel. She said I'd never channeled before. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thought, I'm going to try that. (laughs) So I did it. (laughs) I learned so much from my guests. So I did it on Good Friday. And the next day, I woke up and wanted to go to Maui. And I had just said, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to, you know, I had just gotten back from a trip of, you know, around the world for five months, you know. And I said, I don't want to go anywhere else, you know. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to Maui now. And I went for three months, and I was just getting downloaded. Yeah. I mean, I shipped wow. my car. It was like I knew I had to go, and I was getting downloaded with all this information from when I was in Lemuria. You know, it was just uh, profound, you know, what comes through. Isn't that great? Yeah. It was so cool. Got, yeah. Yeah. 
got out of your own way. Because food yeah. really um, distracts our cells. It really distracts our body. It's like, oh, oh, more incoming. Can you imagine being down there? Incoming. We got another truckload to deal with. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, literally, I always see my little oh bugs my down gosh. there having their little party. I'm like, oh, my God, more is coming. <laughs> and they got to deal with it, right? So they can't really get to really taking care of you or cleaning up the cellular bleed. Who can clean up the mess if more just keeps coming in, right? So wow. um, when the body cleans itself up, it's easier for it to function. When it's easier for the body to function, the mind is clear and we feel good, then it's easier for us definitely to connect and I think people forget about how tied our physicality is to our intuition and to our recognition of ourselves as these divine beings because we came to be physical and full integration means all of your light body is integrated into your physical body the two become uh, vibrate in harmony with each other the two become synonymous with one another there's no difference right we have this idea of ourselves that our higher self is is just spirit and then we're this physical being and kind of a drag while we're here because they can't do anything right but uh really what they've shown me is that it's it's really about the integration it's about lighting up the physical body the being and so so yeah when you make it easier on the physical being by reducing the food it really helps yeah it's like we're creating a space for all this yeah, higher information to come through or something. You know, I don't know. I can't put words to it, but yeah, it's profound. Um, yeah, I learned a lot from that. Thank you, Sahara. Um, I'm yeah, gonna try that next that year on the eight eight portal. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think there's gonna be some good times also um, this winter to really go in. The energy feels like it's gonna. Um, be super um, exciting and uh, invigorating and um, inviting this fall and into Mm. the start of winter. But then I feel like it's going to hit this sort of like, it's going to hit this sort of like blank spot um, in December and not a blank spot in a bad way, but it's sort of like a little reprieve. There's Mm -hmm. these little reprieves that we get because the energy feels like it's really, um, frosted up and moving very quickly right now. And so things are manifesting very quickly. And, um, you know, things that haven't been dealt with are like, boom, it just happens. You know, right. oh, okay, that's dealt with now for good or for bad. Yeah. But um, the winter, I think, okay, good time to go inward, maybe do a nice, um, because when we're not as active, it's easier to fast. It's easier to just, you know, be quiet. And yeah, maybe it is easier. You, yeah. It's a little harder when you're in your go, go, go mode. It's nice when you're kind of withdrawn a little bit. Then you can, you can lighten up on the food yeah, and do some really good channeling, get some good info. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, Nicole has a question on the webcast, and she says, Jaylene, I was introduced to you through Michaela Sheldon and Ethan. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says, um, I've been guided to use my voice and music for healing, yet keep hitting uh, odd blocks when I start to gain traction, and she's wondering what that's about. Hmm. Uh, so Nicole, thanks for asking that question. That's great because it is hard to step into using the voice when that's not something that you grew up doing, or if you're not classically trained like me, I'm not trained in that, and it's definitely um, a little daunting for sure. Um, definitely taps the fear wagon <laughs> for sure. Um, but what is, I'd want to, what the guys really want you to know, Nicole, is that using your voice is one of the most natural things that you can do. And the roadblocks or the stagnation or the lack of movement that you experience really just comes from your own, um, hmm, your own unwillingness to be completely vulnerable in the experience of using your voice and, and, and using one's voice does require vulnerability because we're using that throat chakra, which is where a lot of us uh, struggle sometimes because of all the experiences and, and all of the Akashic experiences, past life experiences we've had, or I like to call them concurrent life experiences, where our voice was stilted or muted or shut down. And so bringing the voice 
uh, through the body and expressing oneself and through that expression saying, I am here and I am here and I want to help, yes, but um, I am here, period. I am here. And uh, when you use the voice for healing, you are stating very emphatically, I am here and I have uh, something to share with you. And it is uh, frightening to step into that. And so the work I would do around that, Nicole, for you would be that you should look into some of your um, other lifetimes in which you have been shut down. That's what I'm feeling. That it's an Akashic remembrance for you of having your voice shut down, not being able to express yourself, not being able to step into your power, uh, not feeling like you have the right to be here. And uh, using your voice is a way of breaking through that fear. Uh, and so the more you do it is the other thing. The more you express yourself this way using your voice, um, I think you have a beautiful voice. I can, I can just, they're just telling me that you have a beautiful voice and that you should uh, use it every chance you get. And that even, Nicole, know that when you are speaking, the vibration of your voice is also carrying the energy of the healing that you are sharing with others. And so however you choose to use your voice, it will um, have that same effect. But the resonance, the tone, the long vowel sound, the tones that are made uh, are very impactful and very shifting and also are very calming to the nervous system for many. And so uh, let go of your fear and step into the place of the knowing that you deserve to be here and that your gifts deserve to be shared with others. And, um, and uh, that will bring more abundance to your process and more abundance to um, people feeling very comfortable and attracted to working with you. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Nicole, for your question. Yeah, everything will start shifting when we um, really don't uh, – when we're keeping ourselves down, nothing is working. You know, it's mm-hmm. really about um, standing in your power and who you came here to be in this lifetime. And, you know, once you take that first step, it just gets easier and easier and easier and more fun and more fun and more fun. <laughs> And then you think, oh, my God, how could I have lived the other way? (laughs) I know. I know. It's it's, true. It just, yeah, it becomes so natural. Yeah. Um, Jaylene, let's talk about your special offer, Healing with Joy Codes, because I love this. And I'm going to sign up for it. I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, I... Um, as I was telling you before we got on to the live call that I spent my day today with Kuan Yin and um, channeled the first, yeah, the first portion of it. It was just amazing. Um, But the special offer is all about helping you to resonate with these codes of joy and do the explorations that you need to do to step into that truth of your being to integrate that truth viscerally at that cellular level to help you to express very freely these codes of joy. Um, so the course works with Kuan Yin. Uh, the course works with the Angel Collective that I work with all the time um, and also with the Mantis Collective. And each one brings their perspective. Uh, Kuan Yin talks a lot about um, using compassion as a vehicle for transcendence from Uh, pain and suffering, and that uh, through sharing of our compassion with others that that we were not meant to um, run source energy through us and leave it at that. We were meant to share it with the collective. We're meant to beat as one heartbeat all in unison, the whole collective, and that all of our energy that we can put up barriers between each other. And and, and that's why sometimes it doesn't feel good to be around people because they either have some kind of barrier or they're being overbearing with their energy. And and so it's it's about just allowing, again, from that place of neutrality and allowing this river of uh, love and compassion to flow from you freely, knowing that it doesn't take any, any effort on your part to do that. 
So I'm really excited about the course. Um, and angels are talking about integrating and resonating with your personal truth and what that means to you and how to recognize yourself as and, and recognize yourself cognitively, but also really feel it viscerally, what it feels like to be this divine spark of source creation and motion, how that um, can be really felt at all levels of your being. Uh, and then the mantis are going to actually do the genetic tinkering to open up those codes and help us to express them. And there's um, matching tones that were created and channeled specifically for the course that um, are also offered. So you get the tones and then you get the three-week course plus the live Q&A at the end um, in which we can all get together as a group and share questions and stories, and um, I can answer questions directly, and I always offer a live channel transmission at that time as well with tones um, and meditation. And um, and then there's also a uh, subscription to my Light Vibes Learning Community, the Embodiment School, which is where I've been posting uh, channeled information. Each month there's a new theme. And uh, there's always written information and tones and resources and guidance, um, everything from your health to scientific information about how to heal and be healthy to very uh, esoteric <laughs> um, channeled energetic information. And there's exercises. And it's, I just wanted to create a resource for people to always be able to go back to and get what they needed from it. Um, so lots of lots of information there. And um, and then if they want, they can sign up for a session with me, which I love. And I always love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Gives me a chance to really dive into your energy field and your physical body. I'm really like um, a medical intuitive. I scan the whole entire physical body, um, look at all the organs, the endocrine system, all the way down to the DNA level. And I see where there's areas that need shifting that are um, out of harmony. I see where those roots go back? Do they go back to other lifetimes? Do they go back to your soul family? Do they go back to your ancestors? Do they go back to the collective? Are they? Are you connecting into the collective in a way that is of detriment? So lots of different ways of looking at what's happening in you real time and then releasing those and helping your body to recover and get back into balance. And so there's always... Um, along with all the energy work that happens at that cellular DNA level, then there's also um, recommendations about diet and um, different specific foods or herbs that you should be using um, because it's really the whole package that you've got to address the body as a whole, the energy, the body, the physicality, all the things that are affecting it and pulling it out of balance should be addressed concurrently to help you to come back into that state of, peace and balance and well-being from within. Okay. So I'm going to recap here. Um, package A is uh, includes uh, new meditations and tones for cultivating compassion and amplifying joy. Uh, it also includes your four-week webcast course um, mm -hmm. with a live Q&A with you and a two-month subscription to your Light Vibes network. Um, and that Package A has a value of over five hundred dollars uh, that you're offering for our Soul Talk audience for one forty seven, um, and then there's also a two pay option available with that as well. And then Package B includes all of that plus a forty five minute private energy healing session with Jaylene, and that Package B is um, almost seven hundred dollars. Uh, that you're offering to our audience for $227. Um, and there's a two-pay option available with that as well. So thank you, Jaylene. That is, mm -hmm. I love this package. Yeah, I can't wait to My dive pleasure. into it. <laughs> I'm so excited about the course and just really, because um, I, I get to go through it at the same time. And um, the information has been, been amazing and transformative already for me. So I'm really yeah. excited about it. I love it. Thank you for bringing that to us. It's just, it's like perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. Just all in alignment. Um, so, Jaylene, can we do the um, the joy tone that you had spoken about yeah. earlier? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'd love to do that. So, um, everybody, take a moment to get your, 
spells. Yeah. Be nice, leave us nice with. cap off. Um, so everybody take a moment to get comfortable. And if you can, put your feet on the floor because we're going to be connecting with the earth. Or if you want to lie down, that's fine too. And start by taking some nice deep breaths. And as you inhale, just feel the breath connect you with your physical being. And as you exhale, just allow anything to release that pulls you out of this present moment. Good. And start to imagine roots flowing downward from your body, down through the floor and into the earth below you. When they reach the earth, they spread out and begin moving downward through the many layers of the earth, flowing rapidly through all of these layers, all of this experience of the earth, moving towards her core, her beautiful crystalline golden core. And your roots make it there and they anchor into this core of light and energy of the earth. And we send her beauty and gratitude and love for all that she provides us. And in return, she sends us a beautiful, energetic, golden beam of light that begins flowing upwards through our roots. As you inhale, that light flows up the roots even more rapidly moving towards your body. Eventually making its way to your body. You may invite this light in and it begins to merge and flow through your tissues, through your cells, your bones, your blood, and it fills you up all the way from your feet and moves up through your legs moves up through your waist and your body, up to your shoulders, down through your arms, up to the top of your head, merging and flowing with all of your tissues and cells, lighting up your DNA, bringing your whole body into the resonance of the earth, singing her song. And in this harmonic convergence with the Earth's energy, please bring your energy and awareness into the center of your heart. It's easy to feel the center of your heart by thinking about something that reminds you of a joyful experience. Or someone you love, a tender moment, a smile, a laugh, moving yourself into that remembrance, feel that inward smile start to move across your face, feel that glow from within that begins to emanate. And this is your doorway into your joy code. And we're going to open that door even further. And we're going to amplify the resonance of these codes. And we're going to open up this gateway between your still point, which connects that umbilical cord of energy through your higher self and over soul. And we're going to allow that energy to flow through like a fountain, an infinite fountain that flows through from your higher self and out into your whole body, reaching every nook and cranny of your body and spilling out and moving out into the room around you and into all of the earth, all of humanity, all of the universe. So you can imagine all that 
happening while the tones are flowing through the airways. Continue to see that beautiful relaxation of love and compassion and joy flowing from your heart into the space around you. And there's no need to turn it off or to pull it inward. You have an abundant, infinite supply of it. It flows from you freely, completely, and it completes you and all that is around you. Breathe deeply into your body. Allow the energy and the resonance of the tone to amplify the travel of the compassion that flows from you. Let your breath be the reminder to you that any time you wish to return to this place, that the breath will bring you here into your heart and that you can immediately begin intending and sharing this energy from your heart for all of humanity, for all that is, that you are one with the heartbeat of all that is. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's 
that's a state you don't want to come out of. Oof. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't have to talk too much. We just <laughs> everybody. Sh- <laughs> wow. That was absolutely unbelievable. Wow. Mm. Whew. Can you imagine like if we yeah. all were in that state all the time on this planet? <laughs> oh I know it. We'd all be wow. so much nicer to each other. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was incredible. Whew. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank um, you. Yeah, they they do. Um, one little note that I will say is that the tones, the tones are for everyone. So use the tones. Allow your voice to bring freedom to your joy. Let it guide you. It's so good at clearing dense energy. And so anytime you use your voice in that way, you do bring yourself into that state of joy as well. Hmm. Wow. This has been incredible, Jaylene. I just, I absolutely love this and can't thank you enough for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patty, for having me. It's been a joy. (laughs) It's been wonderful. (laughs) I really appreciate it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, we have to have you back. This is, wow, very incredible. And um, take advantage of um, Jaylene's special offer, um, the Joy Codes and uh, the four-week course with her and a session. It's just uh, a gift. So thank you for bringing that to us as well. And thank you all for being here. We're sending you all much love and off on your joy tone and enjoy the rest (laughs) of the evening. (laughs) Much love to you you all and big hugs. Much love to you, Jaylene. Big hugs. And with that, we're going to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye now.